Thank you for coming out. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. 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 Thank A friend of mine from the West Coast once mentioned he had a purebred family living in his guest house. Before I could even ask him what he meant, his daughter also moved into his guest house. And I quickly realized they too were integrated animal-human hybrids or coyote people, complete with hind legs, feral eyes, and even a skinny tail. I wasn't surprised. Unlike other hybrids, human coyotes can speak perfect English and often have a surprising vocabulary. A human-coyote hybrid usually possesses the ability to manage finances for the rest of the hybrid community. Soon enough, when you go to H&R Block to do your taxes, you will see a feral coyote human eager to take on the job. Just remember that every human coyote is different, so don't expect every one of them to have such a keen eye for numbers. Protruding bottom teeth, one missing molar, a search with zero results. The present makes itself applicable after the time of departure. The organization of an abandoned faith in the shape of an overbite, an underbite with a connecting future singularity an imperfect positioning of a future open bite as a result of the tongue protruding too far out. Restoration of a smile, natural shapes and similar proportions become possible. Appearance of a premolar, depiction of an open mouth, veneers considered, ceramic and porcelain, an altercation, small amounts of enamel, Compos composite resin, smoothness, seamless results, pockets of pain, irreversible process, bridges and crowns, lesser decay, effectiveness comes with aggressive placement, cement bonding, screw in components, soreness, relief, liquid heat and melted wax, cotton wick behind blackened soot, Smoky blackened wall impression behind glass jar container. Carousel pyramids to rise before disseminating particles into the air at close range. 
spreading further out marginal pockets of empty space allow wick and wax to create significant heat as the center of the candle generously dilapidates. Low odor equals low toxicity. The initial burn must allocate the recommended burn time in order for the wax to burn evenly going forward. When hand washing a jute ottoman, the brittle patterns of braided cable must be delicately draped in cool water and mild soap. Considering how often an ottoman is used, there is a necessity to maintain a rigorous cleaning process during the maintenance every six to 10 months. Considering the daily use of an ottoman, this is hardly an inconvenience. A woven jute ottoman displays intricate hand-woven designs through patterns in a natural finish or neutral white. Traditional detergents are to be avoided as they cause heavily dis heavy disparities in color, distinction, and tone. One must begin carefully and cautiously by lightly removing dirt and then treading lightly on the side of shrinking. Damages will only occur if the ottoman is not treated with sensitivity. A jute ottoman won't shrink like the garment, handbag, or rug you're exposed to. And the soft fibers are woven in with the rougher ones to create a unique and capable sitting experience. Heat and pressure are applied as her understanding becomes tantamount to the guise of free will. The placard reads, no one is free while others are oppressed. The ignored word enmeshed in an orbit of hopeful appraisals. His entrapment is forgiving and always valiant. The enduring attempt to leap forward despite obvious impairments. Prevention as a process of deletion, as an advocacy of the self, when the self becomes too large for the viewfinder. His presumption is never presumptive, but always capable of making assumptions. The assumptions of the past and the contingencies of the present the ground floor is not beginning as long as the past is a starting point. Heat and pressure, the flow of porous light. Sandpiper pine flooring is decorative, yet affordable and always affordable option but always a necessary risk. The risk is the inability of the flooring to complete the room with many styles to choose from. The sandpiper model warms up a room. It saves energy from the ability to lose essence through feasibility. With aspirational details, sandpiper models create the illusion of comfort but satisfy the mind's most cursory details without being too aggressive. Attempt a sandpiper vibe when you see the catalog and focus on recreation. Energy and air, basic practices of seeing before looking and acting before considering, the possibility of no outcome at all, bathing and encompassing, the strain of staying clean by keeping a low profile, fire and shower heads, the prosperity of natural gestures, the mantra of cordial sheep, expectations rolled over to the spectacle that looks back for new endings, remaining and returning, 
the opportunity to return is advocated by the risk profile component of the later verified answers. Disapproval and survival, without outcomes and judgments, the only expectation is this one, as the only dimension possible. Without purification, the spirit becomes reserved for practicality. Without continuous rhythm, there is no chance of the purification of the spirit and this is a steady realization as the doubles of a working realization of the psyche progress. Flameless LED taper candles are sold 24 to a pack. There's a layer of safety plastic between the battery and metal. Flameless candlesticks flicker bright. They glow just like the traditional candles, only they're that much brighter and more beautiful because they aren't real. Initiative becomes relegated to a need-by basis. There is an opening that cannot be filled with candles, whether electronic or otherwise. Each candle requires two batteries and is about the size of a small child's finger. These candles can be left outside for weeks on end without any sign of damage whatsoever. One must twist the base to turn them on or off, just like a flashlight. One at a time, they're easy to turn on or off. They're turned on or off using timers. The timers are on an AM, PM schedule. Warm, white, and romantic ambiance can be administered without worry or refusal. This is a candle that casts light on an assembly of weapons along one wall with an insurance policy along the other. Most sheets are made of cotton or other fiber with absorbent tendencies. And when they have been slept on for a week or two or longer, they will have absorbed quite a lot of perspiration and skin oils and perhaps other bodily fluids from the person or persons who occupied the bed last. There is a foolish pattern inside stating, why should I turn around? All that is necessary is quiet and nearly impossible to hear. There is a way of reimagining a bed as both an office, kitchen, and coffin. An abrasion, a perspective, unsightly. Blankets can be removed and washed, and it seems like those who are quick to talk about top sheets being necessary for warmth are naturally referring to the quilts in the traditional sense. Quilts or duvets refer to a plain quilted sheet of differing thickness. One removes the cover and washes it, however often necessary, or doesn't wash at all. So someone else has to. Facing movements require added pressure and valuable alliance. So what doesn't make one thing better doesn't make anything at all. So when facing movements occur, significant added pressure is added. His responsibility becomes aware of the facing movement, executing a right face with readied eyes and unintended precision. This is called a weekend inventory, followed by a series of reflections, followed up by a bracket system, reinforcing memories, places, moments, and experiences, whether valid or not. The experience of having an emotional reaction to his culpability, to shut down physically, involves avoiding one theme. Added pressures make facing movements sometimes regrettable and sometimes necessary.
showers and drains, exercise equipment, televisions, phone booths, serving tables for meals, benches for comfort, levels and settings, marble countertops, dressers, rooftops for shelter, dials and knobs, cookware, a peephole, a back door for outdoor access, clauses and agreements, electronics, aluminum siding, all-encompassing blinds, a cable access for ample communication, washers and dryers, video equipment, braille on the outside of the dryer and LED components on the washer and an impressive starting power for a modern riding mower. Laughing by the lake, hate inside the gate, laughter with no sound, a fence that moves within and extends out for no good measure, and the hateful proof is real, mistakes and rewards, the echo of the gate, regime items don't decide when to become capable, there is no need for lawn care, empty rewards are removed to make room for the unchangeable mistakes removed for a reason, laughing with the intention of a frightened relic of a past preserved for memory's sake. Thanks so much. Next up is uh, Joel Newer, and after that, it's the Rosa Club. I think I'm thanking the Rosa Club for having us here today. I'm going to read uh, first from this book, which is called In Titan's Goblet. Uh, it came out in September. And uh, both this and the, the new work that I'm going to read from are <clears throat> long, continuous um, unfoldings in many modes. Um, so I'll read two sections, but they don't have names and they don't have numbers. Um, In memory's garden, the gardener does not accept history. He closes the door to heralds of the age. Only what grows here, he hears and heeds. Things here draw their substance from deep sources beyond scrutiny, down to which without us the poem goes. Up here we wear robes of ignorance. We are the priesthood of forgetting, with our eyes burning, destroying the beautiful thing. And all we remember is the fennel stalk, full of fire, the fiery dead eft on the path through the woods, that theft, no myth, sips of Nepenthe, foresight not ours anymore. Forgetting is not ours, but it adorns our awakening. Forgetting means something other than erasing impressions or wounded skin stitched up and love's spell broken. 
at last, at long last, moving on from this port toward open seas, a word we knew, or a face loved, lost in the halls of, say it, hell. Things in themselves, Eucharistic perception, taking hold of the whole by releasing one face, saying farewell, already far, unwell, and the air unhomely, the fear that these resurgent waters of language have fled the desert, where they sprung up against doubt for the, for the girl who wandered and her son, sundered unwell. But the book before me tells me even in exile, an unctuous ambergris is tucked in our fat cheeks. At Galveston or in New York Bay, disembarking the world, not in history and not in dream, love lifts me up on Poland nights, even, even in America, that the ten girls with the curtains drawn dance naked around the Torah scroll, fawny, uncanonical acts, these moan lawns make counterweights to the shtetl, the lying down in Newton, the anastasis in Chatham, monomoy, forgetting is for the gods who laugh, gift and an offering, the slag of the right, the residue of the nighttime. We send up whatever is not of the moment when we are writing, the sounds forging our bodies by the instant as they go into the synesthetic cloth and we die to death. And forgetting is still not what we think it is. If we think to pray, kill that old insipid me, ignorant, cold, to the cellular glories that are evidently divine. Their eyes are so fine. We deny the light three mornings coming to the borders of the will and saying, this is all, let us turn back. Though the herm there, the rock and the free gore is the stone where the old you and your sister ran out in a stand of pines that still hides us from Levitical eyes. And it's the tree's old mournful expression has become the face of a lion, limitless of waters, on fire in the daylight, roaring from the mouth of a stone set by the bedside, opening this one among the twelve, alive, begetting a voice that after forty days of remembering forgets the flood and is a rain body or light's bow, a body of someone pleased by what is not memory, a desire but not your own, on fire but never burning, eternal affluent. This is forgetting, this is remembering, shedding a perfume in the everlasting room. Early and terrible songs out of memory, the outcry, perplexities early, mere hours of magic. Is it me that I remember, and am I myself doing the remembering as I sit here writing what merely arises? Surely some eternal part of me arises and goes, divided from the visible miracle of a man's body, another shade of past or future, but not the color of now, the clear, incomprehensible fearful purple, Abel's blood eked out of the show, almost invisible but not, inaudible but not intangible, first lover and kiss by the frozen pond, sneaking out where the metals were ringing into the realm of everything alive, walking the street down to the place unreckoned, speaking the kiss before the kiss, wary of their spies. But there was no need to worry. The attending angels bent their speech toward us, and the language and their language is time, and time is sometimes anguish, a boundary and impenetrable antrum, sometimes formed by inaudible spells to protect our pleasure from what is written in old books, from wrangling memories. And now she is the mother of many, and I pace the garden alone, crossing the stream flowing 
following what is in mind to be spoken of, remembering who I was and who was with me, with eyes only for that resurrection money, but not denying the ambient glow of some flower, a survival there, a body recumbent in this cave, not gone, to the cave, to the mouth. I look into the aperture of the heart with great misgivings, true today on other days otherwise. And all around me, these dispersed familiars come to me through the labyrinth of vision as threads of fear lead me to no center. And there is no bowl and there is no myth and no algal sea bottom jewel, but all the lovers walk out for many moments carrying flashlights and incense covered in clarity, free of perplexity, dancing what they anciently knew, and now I have to learn more than remember from the equinox encounter and the testimony by night, renewing the magic of pain and the path of words, everything instinct with its exact light, inimitable, put on the name, take it off again, take off everything, naked of images, nothing but the fragrance of egress under your dress after a day of walking in the strangest sun, seraphic thong, sweet sweat of the auspice. These swift and unwitting acts in the strange echoing sepulcher, wise lungs, and the meat strengthens us if we read the words in the light of the rain on the first day. Even the rose of yearning doesn't return us to the hive of tradition. That putrid bee, that surfeit of sweetness, petals ba bend back toward a tone, river and mountain and wind and stone from the far land, study heaven's distances, posing the star and the earth in balance, how quickly those demons climb up our stairs, and as quickly they see their schemes eclipse. She is the sun, Joel is the dial. Let our slowness become suchness, seed everywhere, tafagata, lips, amethyst, laps, me eating death from her spoon, speaking Spanish to the hormiga, twanging the bright forminks, a wanox with a crown of bay, drinking her wainos from the sweetest gully, nothing transitory, nothing unachievable, nothing done, but my song heard only by strangers who seem to come from afar. But far is their mask and strangeness is their deeper disguise and their manyness is a ruse to confound the guards. It is only one and she comes. This new work is called Summerland, um, and I started it in November, and it goes on. We place our hands beneath the waves and slow down the flowing shapes of our dreams. The hours tingle where the fish grow, tuning their instruments but never touching. On this humid night, the cars turn down their holy music, and all we see has gone missing. The passionate chairs that sing their trees and the friends on October streets who walk through fragrant mirrors of jasmine whose stray talking sometimes becomes speaking. And when the moon accustoms itself to the axis of this night, it makes their distinct sounds light up in the pleasures of combination. The fanfare of the daytime becomes that old cow who wrote her name in the sand. And now we hear it. Dinners give our neighbors the strength to live and to wake, the strength to love and all night their meat, 
searches for its dawn. On a humid night, no senator or mayor dares to go out walking. When branches shake out waters that make even the rocks waver, that river snorts its power out, and the oils in the floating tankers sway. The daughters who never will be wives open with their sure fingers the skulls of powers and sing new hymns to the fire in that river, and we hear them. And where warships lie wrecked, the drowned chorus pounds the silt with its thousand hooves. Do not say we trust too far the sky and the sea if love entrusts us with the nearest bodies. On summer nights and in winter rooms, we see what we most adore. We hear as we are most aware of a spine, all light, toiling in the natural dark, only one of several figures released from its destiny, not from its desire. The pilot's eyes wander, and years ago or years from now, we hear salt move through the very heart of the clam, and we can hear the stranger's heart change as she walks by, no more, no more. What he says is not true. Trust the talismans of midnight, only the breezes, the cold buckles. In perfect calm, trust the distances and the far shooter. On this autumn night, I drink the milk because the milk is with me. Things are with me and souls are with me and you are with me out of sight. Lonesome things come to this river town to sing dodgy songs for a penny and ply us with gold stories of eldritch hills, those bowling alleys where the planets roll. That's enough, the girl says. Go home to your fires. Burn all that paper money. Here we need water and its civic power, how it reads the rock and tells the cliff your days are numbered, but not before it sounds its unfinished symphony on all these crumbling and ruined faces. And soon we hear it, those hills and their deer, the cordial mice in newfangled houses, new corn in these po poison fields, newlyweds and fawns, and pine torches, everything. We hear everything tingling moved past our faces towards one seam, one waterfall, one wound in the solid world that will not heal, a door to the liquid realm behind all this rock and metal, the secret scent of water, the simplest spices, the clues masked against all innocence, visit us from that humid clime, the things we have been bold to claim as ours have been with us for a long time, long enough. We are but their foster parents, and now they rush home. This is beyond a night, the tendering realm, the touch space, soft sands for a basement floor, our sandals, all our libels, these small books of hands reading out our loves. This sets one man under the inconsolable sky, and he comforts the air with unceasing attention. But his ways disturb us and the poem, how he surges into his fingers and eyes and his perfect knowledge. So he must go, one head for the many given. This is the prow of lament. This fire offering is beyond the reach of any water. This is not a sacrifice. This is not sacred. Palinurus conquered by sleep did not give them his body. You were drugged by the god and mocked by friends and the poison was not enough. So he washed your eyes with images and the images were not enough and you were stronger than the talk of destiny and all those spells. So he threw you overboard and waves closed in his hands. Banish night. If night conceals the deaths of poets, if it's only Humvees and Pino and fisticuffs, and if our windows are not everlasting windows, flowing out in tribute to a greater creek, we will chart the gloomy country by sound and hunger. One thing will enter another in the potlatch of night, in which not our life, but our deaths are freely given. Bold revelations, lento, take it slowly, walk the hound. Suchness has some several tongues, Wearing a scarf, sorry. 
Suchness has some several tongues. Some fingers. Uh -oh. Sorry. Really, there. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to start that section over. Bold revelations, lento. Take it slowly. Walk the hound. Suchness has some several tongues. Really, there are so many fish and stares, several watchmen and not one crime, but there are equal eyes to the seeming things, and the seeds in my gut are more than enough, not only for what the species needs, but, make to, but to make the roads go home happy, beautiful, very beautiful, how the spunk in our lungs sparkles in this agnostic air, and how space sweats out a familiar smile and old ilium into a cup. And where is that cup now? It disappeared. It returns throughout our history in Novgorod and Pittsburgh and in growths of thick grape, 10 o'clock on the sea path, cycling home. It disappears again. The cup, we fear what this means, that we're abandoned with opera and roasts on Sundays, lacy shadows, spandex, and nothing infinite. It returns the cup. It drives off clouds and the ghosts who peddle tickets to an invisible minstrelsy and tinctures to save us, recipes, mammoth tusks, new world secrets. Here, the beautiful becomes our only trust, and we can hear it, but we can't hold it or own it. All that our hands once knew has gathered in that cup, that distant cup, that silent and secret cup, cold and clear, our only knowledge, the train south to Philadelphia, watching the clouds and the slowest trucks, the snow egress over the meadowlands, my twin brother on the ledge of shadows. Yes, on this most humble night, her thighs pray to the softest wool for nothing, simply praying is touching the live long day plying the duck breast with low heat in its own fat, is deeply prayer and humbles the sky. The Sioux chef's slow heart suddenly hurtles through the space of the fire. Some fingers play that holy music that changes the mind. That is an art, and art is heat, not palmistry or sortilage, but a music of Again, the wool skirt, a music which swaddles the goslings at the leech gate, which puts a slow hand to the raw life right now. Only music changes us, never speech, except as speaking comes back to us at night. We might have heard it in the sun, but if speaking changes our insistent music, we must have knelt down one night, cold night, empty room, and the cup was not full of water that we drank from until someone came there thick with the blood. We must have humbled ourselves before the serpents of the snow as the snow fell on a child speaking or learning to, all sibilance to abrade his shell. Just as the cook kneels before the empty pan and the girl slips her first dollar to the soulful teller, just as and not as, this is the twofold moonlight that annuls all the aching likenesses, that stitch or seek to, again, the God's shoulder and the lamp, the crab and the soul of the water. The confection is truest. We make it together. Tectonic foreplay, the carbon ebb in the kitchen, shoulder, down your neck, behind your ear, far from the world of apples. On this humid night, a man's body in the scum and chaff of waves, wearing a scarf of choiceless light wrapped around him by the wife of the sea, her deft hands of salt, salacious, taste my skin, skirt the land. He washes up on Sicily. Dead or alive, his body works at the sand, like the wind works at our bastions of reluctance, as she carries a single candle across the empty pool, stone pool, or across the fields of brandy wine, and cleans that stained grass with light. The green world opens its eyes, her dance with knives in Moab, 
From this cliff, she says, from this cliff, I curse the camp of my enemies. But when she raises her hand to do it, it's all blessing and aloe, hominy and pork, this unbelievable frontier tenderness. It's the solid wagons and snow. It's the strength of blue twill. Suspicious words like these fret the heart's hair. No one ever sees the captain on land. The ship anchors. We come ashore. We steal the beams. We build our fortresses. But the stranger magnet of a cortical flame, truer than north, keeps working at his will and will, and will drag him, dead or alive, through the door, the earth, the door in the wall of the continent, and the fish follow, and the loose sill of barnegat, lento, spills choicelessly into the waves with no scent and no recompense. So with no counterweight, the country itself tilts upwards, and row houses clasp their beams in desperate prayer. It must be over. The sinews are torn by an arctic bow. The orphic jets with their unscripted energy are leaving the caves of dream. They cleave the sky's horrific schedule. Where has the water gone through all those mills? Where has the bullion gone? The coin that stood still and the coin that twitched. The questions don't work this time. Clothed in water voicelessly, the guide star of an ancient science staggers with its antlers falling off. And who knows where it has gone in the half flight. Thank you. And thank you to Alex for making this happen. And thank you to Kim for coming coming down. And thank you all for listening. of the unconscious down here. All kinds of things can happen and are happening. Um, thank you, Alex, and thank you, Joel, and thank you all for being here. It's a total pleasure to read here. I, I love this space. Um, and I'm just looking, okay, I'm just gonna make sure I can, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> So I'm going to read um, from two, uh, two books. This one, Re-Evolution, I wrote in the early aughts. So it's, almost, it's over 10 years old, but it was recently reissued by Huntington Press, which if you don't know, is a pretty incredible open access press. And what they're doing, in addition to a lot of other things that they're doing, is um, Oh, my feedbacking? No, no. Is it my That's earrings? It's my earrings. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can hear it. Um, uh, they are taking presses. So this was originally published by the Athique Press, an LA press that no longer exists. Uh, Vanessa Place and Teresa Carmody. And they're taking uh, presses and archiving them online. And uh, it's an incredible archive. And I'm very grateful to have this book reissued. So. This is the reissue, and I'm going to read a little bit from it. And then I'm going to read from Phantom Captain, which just came out in October, which is a fence book. Um, and a trigger warning, I'm going to sing a little bit. <laughs> so, and I'm not a singer <laughs> by any stretch. Okay, here we go. Oh, I lost my little, my cat took my little bookmark out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blame it on the cat. It's all the cat's fault. <laughs> okay, so this is from Re Evolution. Chapter 11. And so I'm going to struggle a little bit with the light here. Okay. Uranium Decay Series Matter X. Sun, spend there still. 
sun, stand now still, heirs of dissolvable air, nothing, baggy, vapor, drop of a drop. You ran one more drop on the microscope, slides top. We had a fine glass rod drawn out to a fine solid point, and he withdrew a drop of a drop. He wiped the point right on the cloth, and he withdrew another drop of a drop. He'd done this one hundred times before. The drop disappeared. You've got to dig it up. Reaction is taking place very slowly in both directions. Reaction is taking place very slowly in both directions. Reaction is taking place very rapidly in both directions. Reaction is taking place very rapidly in both directions. The rubber bung is pushed right into the test tube. The rubber, rubber bung is pushed right into the test tube, carrying out the, carrying out the reaction in an inert atmosphere, carrying out the reaction in an inert atmosphere. Lead is not a very reactive element. Lead is not a very reactive element. Chlorine begins to dissolve. Copper begins to dissolve. Reactions appear to have ceased. Value for the volume of the ocean. Molecules, they undergo many collisions and their direction of motion alters everything. Their movement is sometimes called the drunkard's walk and there's value for the volume of the ocean. Ring of fire no charge. Ring of fire it carries no charge. A gas, a glow in the dark. Chapter 12. If both assertion and reason are true statements, but the reason is not a correct explanation of the assertion. If the assertion is true, but the reason is a false statement, if the assertion is false, but the reason is a true statement, if both assertion and reason are false statements, and when it is all over with the human intellect, nothing will have happened. Nietzsche. Chapter 19. Cast off by a mother so utterly transcended, hallucinating up ephemerality, I feel, I sense that. I have an idea. Aha, uh -huh, he's done it. He's broken the rules and I found him out. Dream, scream. This story is like a cheap cops and robbers movie or a poor man's version of Kafka. Attacks on alpha function, constantly finding fault. He reported the presence of a lake but never drank from it. The contemporary crisis of an engorged image spectacle prostituting privacy. Human growth, biology of the human animal, justice through knowledge, thought worlds, alpha reductase deficiency syndrome, gifted prodigies, botched poets, Herculean barbine, states of being and ways of acting human. Qualu Atamwal, a personal transformation, sexual Wissenschaft. This interesting pair of blood sisters, sex organs buried in the earth beneath a living tree with the help of a glass sometimes, unsilvered or a pane blackened with smoke. In the boundless future, the I is an excess of excess. The I is empty still. The I calculated and therefore still knowing where it stood. Path of grace. Every 
Blank is like a setting sun. Simplicity stripped of all attributes will soon sink into the bottom of the bottomless like a bolt from the blue. Breathe before you think. The eye would go so far as to reinvent all language. Leave us helpless, helpless, helpless. Chapter 14. Saying no to everything is a crucial way to be assured that one is really themselves. The I is still a child. Economy is as waste product. Do we have a chance to be better? A second chance? When the baby enters the birth canal, does a disenchanted spirit go in and pull a switcheroo? What happens when you like the merchandising more than the man? State-dependent recall. Pity toward another version of the self. Emotions are culturally and historically specific. Ennui, angst, amai, being a wild pig, desirable, contemptible, admirable, despicable, respectable. Maternal thinking. People who were diseased with this default. Why was I born when I was born? Why was I given the body I'm living in? Clonopin, Wellbutrin, Lexapro, Levictol, Effexa, Prozac, Alexa, Zoloft, Ambien. Decorum, gravity, and norm making. Clowning, parody, and norm breaking. Masculinized sorrow, everlasting virginity, black register of a thousand sins, ontological and essentialist he whore. Be went through the forest of being and is coming out the lake of knowing. Networks, meeting sites, body language. Who has the power to establish a version of the self? Jane never doubted why she needed to hate Charles. It's not true to be so good. Now, goodbye, daughter. A masterpiece in the medical style. I buried myself alive. It's not a fancy yesterday. So many beings. I know I could be me in. Genderlicious gender bars. One individual or several. Chromosomal similarity is not an all or nothing affair. The cultured heredity of a human population, the cultural heredity of a horse population, the ultimate extension of the ancestral family, also the family of the future, genetic endowments of posterity. Vermont frogs will never meet Florida frogs. <laughs> okay. All right. So just a little bit more, and then you can go softly into the Philly Saturday Night Live. Um, <laughs> this is from Phantom Captain, Captain, and I'm just reading an enlarged type, but this is what the book looks like, and the cover is by my dear friend Sally Ross, <laughs> who's a painter, um, a fantastic painter. Okay. Chapter six, and this is the last, uh, this is the ending of the book. So spoiler alert, trigger warning, spoiler alert, basement readings, <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> All right, the great empty good night. I am always, forever, never young again and have gotten very good at hashtag alt backslash alone. And it is my mission to tune in to loneliness and to feel it everywhere, in trees and plants and animals and in the human animal. Social conditions frame psychic ones and face plant one atop the other a big fat pile up of life and property distributions, consensual curveballs, 
melancholy on a budget with parachuting capital accumulations that alert us to the fact that it's so urban in here. I've now heard from a reputable source that her feet are cut and bleeding and she's running in the sand late and lost and dehydrated, dehydrated and too naive and I say, that child is in a flood of phallic activity. That was actually about my daughter. <laughs> then, Kate, okay, holy shit. I had a dream that you told me how to finish editing my novel by saying, remember that no matter how advanced the character's desires are, they are still just animals moving through the world. It still means a lot to me that I can make myself come the old fashioned way. The shit you smell just might be your own. The realest things seem poisoned. I'm ashamed to be a man. I'll show her a thing or two that women don't know. My joy is in my mind. I don't need more of you there. Thought is sacred, unlike us gross men. Technology took human emotions out of the world. They knew what they were doing. I'll join the unruly rulers. The rulers who don't rule, but rule those who rule those who rule. Ruling, rulers, rule. You be quiet, shh. Can't you be happy? It's a natural thing anyway. He brings the dreamer, a sad pig, a sad sow. I killed my father, I ate human flesh, and I quiver with joy. Freedom is an ordeal you have to live through, symbiotic, parasitic and commensal. Earth takes back what it produces. Pigs take away evil and purify it, perform miracles. She has herself buried beneath 20 meters of earth. She dies weeping. Her tears inundate the soil. Family is a body that donates itself. A last resort, expressing feelings and making them candidates. Lots of detective work is worth the investment to becoming aware of great things which are possible beyond recovery, less safe than garments, of decoupaging a rare stamp to a paperweight. Remember, the gift must look good to the person who beats a path over and over again until it becomes home. Invention takes a toll, always has. That's the cruelest joke most of us know. What gets pinned on what, what passes the buck? Inve innovation takes a toll, like being womanly. Good night, Menzies. Darkening wings of desire, history inside the volcano of preservation management usage. Am I blue in the field of the iced over crater? Declared taxonomy of humanity, so, so humans, made to measure in approximate length and width of loving one another. Counter volcanic axes of the feminine and skin envelopes of the feminine blown in from paradise. Is biography destiny's dust up? with skin, volume, shadow, light? And can the feminine carve the way if invention takes a toll by melting traces on molten ground of our own poly orbit of who is speaking? Fixed fugitive moments, connecting ephemeral unconscious to paths of no resistance, only burdens of proof, Sculptural seance conditions for a past as yet to come. Intervening space is visiting ruins, and all love presumably left among them. Presuming even the possibility of love, or a world that can repair, let the hating world be known. Oh wait, it already is. <laughs> I am 20,000 leagues 
under my epicenter. What forms me is molten endurance, experience pressed through my own skin, unable to recognize carnival gloss for what it is, an heirloom emptied out blood box for seeing recycled water bottle of my own tears, able to see history for what it is, a natural selection site, double axis pirouette of the feminine and the sculptural. Is biology destiny? Are sculptural conditions required for time to come? Avenir intervenes space. Minds, objects, mere, mired within ruins of pressed down hate and love. During the dangerous campaign, and through a lot of advantageous and unrecognizable conditions, an amorous arrow to the heart fulfilled my ask. Yoked in fiery wolves, stuck with glue grown from them, put to sleep unsleeping. Her father didn't give a cause to carve her limbs, his limbs, and throw them out to sea. Return youth, let go old blood, Pour in new blood. We are undone. Life is to grief, as begging is to parody. Paltry hiding places, remote nooks and crannies of the realm of the universe, overwhelmed and in ruins. Let all things pass, because no one may safely assail the strong. Cures worse than the peril or memory of my better self, my shitty fortunes, the throng of the silent, a little boy excited by the moves of his stepmother who water feeds the flames, strange nuptials, follow up face attacks so well begun. Grief is just practicum, so glad I armed my daughter. Horror smites my heart. The mother has come back. The wife is banished. A way through has opened for me. I cannot believe I'm becoming a mountain of repeat. I don't believe in that mountain. And now I made it. I paid homage too late. I messed with my ancestors. I let the void fuck me up. We are babies, boats, and roses. A multiverse of pleasure annihilation, a perpetual going on being of utopias. Like my mother making noodles until her skin falls off, her debt to nature and the natural world, something to offer the bars of my jail. I feel a day old plus more in my house, and in my chores, but also know to say what I must. My aims are involuntary. I can see in the dark into the truth of everything we know. Cultural infiltrations and even the process of thinking itself, an elaboration of what cannot be fully mapped. When we have to say a goodbye so thick you could fight it. Death in a universalizing storm. Absence as a condition of thinking. That was my child on the rails pulling out into the darkness. What is required to come to life? Is form the performance? Is contact at odds with delivering these opposites, which are so much everywhere? My personality, statues, my barbaric natural body's way to consolidate a careful commodity that is not containing anything, that is not a vessel for anything, but a sensory smatter of selfhood some people never get together, as in, what does it mean that I can't take a lifetime in this aggravating acceleration to say what I must. Thank you.
Uh, we have two people traveling. Uh, we're collecting six dollars door before uh, before you leave. Up there, Alex <laughs> arrived. I'm not clairvoyant here. I don't know what's going on. I'm not clairvoyant, man.